Hi, my name is Rachel. In my last video, I documented some of the early hours in the day following a historic dry windstorm that swept through the Pacific Northwest on December 7th, 2020. Following the over 1,500 views and dozens of comments, I was very excited to come back with a follow-up video about what was going on and how things were evolving. However, the very next day, our family actually evacuated. Voluntarily left our homes, we packed our car, and drove up to a friend's house in Vancouver, Washington. Wonderful and generous friends who we are so grateful for that we stayed with during the what became over a week up in the Portland area, trying to escape the density of the smoke. Eventually, the the smoke density was almost the same all the way across the state. And so really, you were kind of just stuck inside. And because we didn't have cars that had air filter systems or any way of putting something like an N95 mask at the time on our children in order just to get home, we were sort of just stuck inside in the Portland area until things cleared up just barely enough for us to feel like it was safe to get in the car and drive home and immediately start running air machines and air filters in our own home. Unfortunately, the day that we planned to leave Portland, we walked outside to begin packing things into the car just to realize that it wasn't there. So we had these two vehicles in Portland and on the morning that we were going to finally come home, our Toyota was missing. We had a little 98 Toyota Corolla very easy to break into, come to find out. Someone broke through our lock on the passenger side of the car. They took off with the car. Luckily, again, we have wonderful friends and a friend of ours came all the way up to pick us up and bring us home, which was very wonderful of them. The next day we were contacted by the Portland Police Department who said that they had found our car. They also impounded our car, so didn't want to have to pay $250 of an impound fee in order to get my vehicle back. And though it was totally heartbreaking that our vehicle was stolen and we lost a lot of just purely sentimental things, uh, the kinds of things that you pile into your car with your children with you when you are trying to run away from a wildfire. Luckily, I learned a very, very important lesson that I wish I had taken to heart before that, which was get renter's insurance. I didn't have renter's insurance going into this whole fire ordeal, which I can't believe how irresponsible that was. See, I did get renter's insurance right away, and thank God, because then in the month of October, although this was a less universal problem, in my own home, our floor started to leak water and there was a slow leak coming up from under the cement foundation of my townhouse where I rent and our property management company had to come in and tear apart our kitchen and the floor. If I didn't have renter's insurance, I would have been totally screwed because our family couldn't really be in our home, but the property management company did not plan to do anything about that. Luckily, our insurance covered us staying in an Airbnb, a place to teach our kids since we have, you know, our kids are home doing homeschool like everyone else right now. We needed to be able to cook food in our kitchen. So for about two weeks before Halloween, we got to stay in an Airbnb, which was very interesting. I feel like between these two experiences, I had a chance to very much evaluate what was important to me and what was important to our family and what did our kids need to feel safe and entertained and stable and what did I need for those things. The first time around having the car stolen, having to evacuate our homes, that was all so scary and traumatic that I was so grateful that it got followed up with this comparatively easy to deal with, I, I might go as far as to say relaxing time uh, where we could be at the Airbnb in a just a empty, cleared up, clean house where we had space, everybody had their own room, and it was really amazing just to have those two experiences back to back like that. So on top of and layered in like a crusty weird lasagna to this whole experience has been my health and as you can tell um, I've 
got red going on here on my face, inflammation things happening. I'm actually doing so much better. I can barely even express how much better I feel now than I did a week ago. So for anyone who doesn't know, I have eczema and psoriasis and honestly just some kind of undiagnosed, underdiagnosed inflammation disorder of some kind. And the strange part of this whole sequence of events is that my first doctor's visit was actually on September 7th, the day that this windstorm showed up. I got to see my doctor, I got to have all these blood tests initiated, get the ball rolling in this positive direction in one way, and then just heaped the stress uh, on all of that. So since this last video, of course, we've had the fire, we had the floor, we had Thanksgiving, we've had Christmas, we've had New Year's, we've had January 6th, I don't even, we can't start that for this video, but that happened, and then Inauguration Day, and now here we are, and I am very excited about the future. My health problems have really been pushing me to think again more about what is important to me and what is it that I want to do. If I'm so upset about being held down by my health, what is it that I want to do with my life? Making these videos is one of those things, and so I'm excited about that because it's one of those things that hasn't gone away. I've been excited about making these sort of videos since 2013. If I just do it consistently, I know that it will be a positive force in the universe. Like I have good intent on this platform and for the people who follow and watch these videos. And so I believe that if I just keep doing it, I will get better at it and I will get more poignant at what I'm trying to say and do with these things. So I'm just gonna roll with it. This is a soft announcement for something that my friend Paige and I have been talking about. I've been talking a lot about it with my partner James and it's something that we're really passionate. We're gonna be putting something together that in the future is gonna have live events. Uh, want to put some online events together in the meantime. My friend is getting into graphic design and we all used to run events together and so we want to put together some live events both online and in person. Obviously they're gonna have to wait and be COVID safe. Tentatively this August we want to have an in-person gallery event. Whatever that means the idea is to mix mediums and get creative people together as many different artists who are like-minded, who want to promote things like direct action, recycling and upcycling. We want to put people together, get conversations happening, get people thinking of new ways to do things, new ways to trade and support each other as small business owners and small creators. One of the things I'm trying to remind myself of is that if we just determine that we are doing this, that is a thing, it's already happening, the momentum is there, it's already done. We're just acting on it. The thing exists in the future and we just have to walk down that path. And if we keep doing it for 20 years, it doesn't matter how bad we are at stuff. Because if we've been working on the same thing for 20 years, it's gonna be cool. Eventually where we wanna take this is live festivals, both like film festivals, music, art, different kinds of creative events that we get people together and throw these conventions and cons and things like that. Please forgive my hairline. It's what it is and we're just gonna both have to live with it. So anyway guys, I'm gonna have to compress this into some kind of watchable video for you. Thank you so much for being here till the end of the video. If you like this kind of thing, please subscribe for more. I'm gonna be bringing you more about the Art Collective and I'm just gonna be putting out kind of random stuff in the name of I need to make I need to create, I have to practice these videos. And as much as I would love to niche down to something that would really like find that audience that I need so that we can create the community that we want to do all of these things, that's all gonna have to happen in good time. And if it takes me a year of posting completely random junk to get the idea of what it is that I'm here to do on this earth, I'm gonna take it, run with it, and if you wanna come with me on that journey, well then thank God and I will see you out there. Get out there and be your best human because that's all you can do. <laughs> Thanks, bye. I did the thing, did the thing, I did the thing.